Along with the schism with the Catholic Church and the English Church's reform, Henry VIII confiscated the properties and possessions of the clergy and monasteries. The royal coffers were empty and the English abbeys were massively rich, possessing more than a fifth of the territorial wealth as well as an outstanding treasure in the form of statues, silver, and gold. But, fearing new confiscations and new taxes, the North rose up against the king. In 1536, he gathered an army of 35,000 men. Fearing defeat on the battlefield, Henry decided to negotiate. The leaders of the movement asked the king to reverse his religious policies and punish Cromwell. The king accepted and said he would fulfill those demands in the near future. The leaders returned to their places of origin, disbanded the armies, and became enthusiastic about the king's act. But guess what Henry VIII did? Once he made sure the enemy army was dispersed, he started his revenge. One by one, the leaders of the movement were judged. They were convicted of treason and sentenced to death. From that moment on, there were no more uprisings in England. But Henry VIII lost the love and trust of his people. As Machiavelli would say, he preferred to be feared. After Jane's death, Henry felt even more dismayed. But as a widowed king, he was in a position to promote a rather advantageous union besides having more heirs. Cromwell searched for a bride abroad for two years until he decided to form an alliance with a Germanic duchy under the rule of the Duke of Cleves. The chosen one was Anne of Cleves, 23 years old, who was well-educated but was nice-looking. On seeing her portrait, Henry convinced himself to sign the contract. She arrived on New Year's Eve, 1540, Henry was deeply excited as he waited to welcome her at the port. But when he encountered the bride, he was deeply disappointed. She looked nothing like the portrait. He even said to Cromwell, she does not have the beauty that has been reported. Henry still tried to escape his contract, but couldn't. The ceremony was held on January the 6th, 1540. The king's fourth marriage was never materialized. Henry's aversion to the bride only became stronger on the wedding night, complaining of the sagginess of her breasts and the sloppiness of her skin. Although the king and queen often slept together, he claimed she was a maiden. A few months later, he was planning a divorce. In early July, the parliament declared the union null and void. Anne was happy to follow her plans. She stayed in England for another seven months and had a good relationship with Mary Tudor, one year older than her. A few weeks after his marriage to Anne, Henry VIII noticed a new girl at court. Catherine Howard was appointed maid of honor to Anne of Cleves at the end of 1539. She was about 19 years old, short, plump, cheerful, and already skillful in the art of seduction. She was also a puppet of a rather ambitious group of courtiers led by her uncle, Thomas Howard, Duke of Norfolk, and the Bishop of Winchester. They hoped to have more influence over the king, to go against Cromwell's pro-Protestantism policies. Catherine's uncles convinced Henry. On June 10th, Cromwell was arrested in the Tower of London, and on July 28th, just 19 days after the annulment of his fourth marriage, Henry VIII and Catherine were married. Henry was madly in love with Catherine. He described her as his rose without thorns and covered her with jewels and gifts. In return, she played the role of a loving and obedient wife. The king was already 49 years old, overweight and ill. The estimations of his weight were about 135 kilos. He could no longer keep going with his life of excess. In 1541, he fell to fever, prompted by several ulcers. Everyone feared his death, but he recovered, but began to suspect everyone of treason. Catherine was young and did not know how to deal with her husband's spells of moodiness. 
she was also unprepared to behave properly in court. She ended up getting involved with Thomas Culpepper, the king's personal servant. She met with him several times and in different places. Henry was unaware of the queen's adultery, but the members of the royal council were keener. The council decided to warn the king carefully. No one would accept to be betrayed so easily, let alone the king. They handed a document to the monarch. At first, the king did not believe it, but soon came the evidence, including a love letter to Thomas in the handwriting of the distinguished queen. Henry could not resist and fell into tears. Thomas was sent to the Tower of London. Before he was executed, he confessed everything. Catherine was accused of treason and was also executed on February 13, 1542. Henry married again after 16 months. During that period, he quarreled against his old enemies France and Scotland. The battles against France yielded nothing, and Henry spent a fortune with his army. Henry feared the union with Scotland with the French. He wanted the prompt loyalty of Scottish King James V, who was the son of his sister, Margaret, in other words, his nephew. Henry toured the north, but was defeated. In a counterattack, James V toured the south and was humiliated. With 15,000 men under his command, he lost to only 3,000 Englishmen. Two weeks later, he died, leaving a baby daughter behind, who would become Queen Mary Stuart and a vulnerable kingdom. It was Henry's chance to invade Scotland, but he opted for diplomacy. He attempted to arrange a marriage between his son Prince Edward and Princess Mary Stuart. The Scots did not accept it. At the command was Queen Mary of Guise, who fiercely resisted the English attempts, allying Scotland with the French, sending little Mary Stuart to the French court so that she would marry Francis II in the future. In 1543, the year of his last marriage, Henry VIII was 52 and his health was in bad shape. He was extremely fat and in chronic pain from leg ulcers. Walking was very painful. To move between the palaces, he had to be carried between the rooms. His last wife was Catherine Parr, from a respected family of landowners. She became a widow at the age of 20, then remarried, just to be widowed again nine years after her marriage at 31. Without offspring, but with a respectable fortune, she fell in love with Thomas Seymour, brother of Henry VIII's third wife, Jane Seymour, but the king took an interest in her, who was torn between love and duty, but ended up choosing the latter. The wedding was not a secret ceremony, and the kings from other nations were invited. Catherine seriously took her role as stepmother, offering her friendship to Mary and worrying about the education of Elizabeth and Edward, then nine and five years old. In her years as queen, the court became a joyful place as she liked music and dancing. At her wedding, she was more of a nurse than a king's roommate. Henry VIII used to have pain-filled fits of rage. It was said that the stench of the infected ulcer on his thigh was dreadful. Catherine had already taken care of a sick husband and altruistically played her role. For his last marriage, Henry VIII chose well. The last years of Henry VIII's reign were far from successful. His financial disarrangements kept growing. He became more and more tyrannical, condemning several servants to death. In December 1546, death was impending. His son was only nine. He still had to wait six years to take power. Fearing that his heir would become a pawn under the nobleman's games, he wrote a detailed will, mentioning that England should be governed by a regency council in which all members would have equal authority. He died on January 28, 1547, at 55. He was buried in the chapel of St. George next to Jane Seymour, as he had asked. Henry ruled for over four decades.
He clung to power with a tight grasp, surviving uprisings, invasion attempts, and even excommunication, just to emerge as an independent monarch whose power was greater than that of his father. He defied the Pope. As leader of the English Church, he freed it of corruption and adopted the Bible in the English language. He added the Welsh into the English Kingdom and even declared dominion over Ireland. He showed strength to the rest of Europe. The merchant navy grew stronger and the tax system improved. But Henry was a libertine king, a spendthrift, and neglected his country's commercial interests by not encouraging and supporting English trade. He also failed to get a slice of the New World. It is possible to affirm that Henry VIII's major faults was that he did not care for his poorest subjects, and the plight of the lower classes worsened during his reign. Also, with his death, he left the country divided into noble factions. Without a safe line of succession, and with the dynasty threatened, not to mention an imminent religious conflict, the Tudors had challenging times ahead.